Hi everybody, welcome to this Wii episode for the STM32 F1 examples and today we are taking a look at EMU controlled animation using the OLED display and the BNO055. How about having controlled animation using the position of the object? And this is today's video's topic. So we do have our wheel guy here going left and right. This is because the emu that we are going to use is not really stabilized um, and we is not filtered actually. So what we are going to do is to control the wheel guy position um, based on the position of this board. So if I move it in this side, you can see that the wheel guy is going down and if I move it to the opposite side, the wheel guy will go up. Same if I move to the left, the wheel guy is going to the left and if I move to the right like this, he will be also moving to the right. So this is quite a controlled position based on controlled animation based on the position. And this is a quite a simple example that you can use to make something more complicated and more interesting. So if you'd like to know more, just follow this video. Actually, this video is inspired from the, uh, the tutorial of the STM32F1 for the I2C communication where we created the basic function for the I2C communication and then put it the, um, this knowledge to establish the communication with the OLED and the BNO055. And if you are interested to put a graph on your displays, whatever the Nokia display or the OLED display, you can take a look on this uh, Python video that we also added where you can convert a BMP file to a format that can be displayed in the screens. As usual, the god that we are going to share today is available on GitHub. You can find the link in the description below. We are going to use only C language and the program that we are going to use for coding is KL version 5. The hardware that we are going to use is the STM32F1 aka Blue Pill, the BNO055 Chinese board coming from AliExpress, and finally the OLED screen SSD 1306. So before jumping to the code, let's take a look on the circuit that we are going to make. So we are connecting the STM32F1 to the uh, BNO055 within using this way. Please careful to connect the address pin to 3.3 volt as we are using the hexadecimal 29 as the address for the slave. Then we are going to connect the OLED SSD 1306, same as um, the um, BNO055. They will be using the same line for the clock and the SDA. So, and that will be our connection here, quite simple. So for the libraries, this is the list of library that will be used. And don't forget that this program is available on GitHub. So you don't have to, no need to confuse yourself about this. Okay, so now that we have reviewed the circuit and we have an idea, let's jump to the code. Before jumping to the code, if you enjoy this channel and you'd like to have more of this content, you can subscribe and support us. Okay, so let's take a look to the circuit first, like the real circuit. So as you can see here, this is my STM32F1, this is my BNO, and this is my OLED screen. And I connected the 3.3 um, volt and the ground here, where I also took, took from the 3.3 the volt here and connected to the um, the um, sorry the address of the BNO055, so we can have the address the 29 hexadecimal. And you can see I'm using the I2C2 peripheral and connected to both um, the both um, component, which as you can see here. Okay, so now let's jump to the code and take a look at it. So, yep, and this is the code. Let me bring it. Okay, so first of all here, this is the library that we use directly in this main program. And this is the I2C2 pins and the I2C1 pins just in case. If you'd like to change the I2C, you just change the wiring. And here, each time you have the two, you change it to one. Then I put it always the peripheral at the first one to change. Okay, so this first function here is initializing the um, BNO055. And the second one is the one that initializes the OLED screen, the one that has 64 um, bit high. And after that, the OLED blank means to make the whole screen blank. So if I save here and build, I should have no zero nil error. And let me make this one smaller here. And if I load, nothing will happen here. Okay, so because I just make my screen blank. 
Um, and as you can see, I'm preparing two variables, i explain later on. So let's jump to the next part of the code. So this is the part that I have been explaining in the previous videos, but uh, let me quickly give you an idea about it. So let me uncomment this part so we can review it together. So here I'm declaring a walkman or the wheel guy, the the, um, the variable at image type. And image type is a structure that we created together that help us to display the picture later on. So this image has been creating using the Python and you can take a look on the Python um, tutorial where we create this image so we can use it to display directly on the OLED. And this is how to declare it. So first of all, we are going to use this buffer this one, you can see this buffer is eight, um, eight column, uh, eight rows by eight, 128, which is exactly the dimension or the number of um, bit available um, on byte available on this screen. And this buffer, we need to first of all clear it and make it empty. And after that, you can see here when I put center for this one. So this is controlling the positions, the X position and the bit Y position of the picture that I would like to show. And this is after that, we do have this function that put inside the buffer. So inside this array, put it the picture that we would like. And as you can see, we are we need to put the image type Walkman and we would like to put the picture number four, which is the guy looking directly to the screen. And after that, we are we would like to put it in the OLED buffer. Then we just print this one in the OLED buffer. As you can see here, only print have the two or the I2C number because this is the one interacting directly with the OLED. All the rest are just animation and um, graphic related um, code. So if now I save, I build my code and I load. I should see the guy here looking. So let me try to zoom in a bit and to show you how does it look like. And we do have our guy exactly in the middle of the screen. And this is thanks to center walkman, which it changed the coordinates, which is the X position and the bit Y position. Also, you can see this one has used the um, address of the Walkman as we needed to change this one directly. If you are interested, you can take a look on the animation drive when you can see the code and how it's written. It's extremely simple. That's why I don't want to stop by there. Okay. And we wait for two seconds, which is the delay MS. We can jump to the next part of the code. So the next part of the code here, let me uncomment it, is a little bit more complicated, but very simple. So nothing really to, 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 to think about too much. Let's uncomment this one and jump to the code. So first of all, so let's also uncomment the variables, which is just a J for a loop and a right left that we, I'll explain later on. So first we do have this function that will read the Angular data from the BNO and will provide me this data from this array, which is a three short uh, uh, variable array. And we will have three data read and inside this one. So what we are going to use this emu motion, this function will just read the data from this angle and update the Walkman position. So based on how the wall, the, the position of the emu, the Walkman, this one X post and bit Y post position will be updated accordingly. Left, right is controlling if the Walkman will have to look left or right. And after that, so emu having output will be zero or one. So if I have a change in position, that will be a one. So we are going to have this change of position here and we see some motion. And if I don't have any position or any motion, it will work and show just a guy walking and looking at us. So now that we do have everything, let's save, build. Okay, no error, no warning. So, and let's try to um, load the code. So we will see the Walkman again. And after that, we do have our guy looking at us, but we don't have that much motion. As you can see, sometimes he moves a bit because the BNO055 can be a little bit unstable, but, but there's some code to stabilize it. In a way, you take the average after 10 reading and you will not have this noise anymore. So if I do like this now, 
and I move the guy, you can see the wheel guy is going to the left, and if I move to the other side, the wheel guy starts walking to the right. And after that, if I go down here, the guys go down and he goes up. So this is a kind of a controlled animation using the MU. Something very simple, but imagine the application that can be happen as you can read and control the animation. Okay, that was quite short because quite simple. I hope you enjoyed and as usual, if you like this video, you can put a thumbs up, subscribe and, or give us a comment. Thank you so much guys and see you soon!